Welcome to the Multiple Linear Regression Tutorial in SAS. This tutorial is broken up into two different parts. The first part is the example from class, and there are slides that go through it in a pretty detailed way, so I welcome you to take a look at those slides. The next part is example two, and it starts with a slightly different color of slide. Today in this tutorial, I will be taking you through example two. You'll be able to find the data sets for both of the tutorials in the tutorials folder. Here's VO2max, that's for the first example, and weights is for the second example. So copy those to your class stat folder along with this code linear regression tutorial so you can follow along. You'll be able to find the weights codebook along with this tutorial for a description of the weights dataset. This is the same one we used last semester. Our variables include age, which is the mother's age in years, LWT, which is the weight of mother at last menstrual cycle in pounds, smoke, which is whether or not the mother smoked during pregnancy, coded as zero for no and one for yes, and BWT, which is infant birth weight in grams. The research question is, how much variation in infant birth weight can be explained by mother's age, weight, and smoking status? If you haven't already run your lib name statement, do that, and then we can inspect the data and run descriptive statistics. To inspect the data, we'll double click on the data set and we'll look through, notice our variables specifically, do they look like they're supposed to? And they do. So we can close out. Let's take a closer look at our variables so we know what kind of descriptive statistics to run. So we have three scale variables here and one nominal variable. The scale variables can be described by using proc univariate statement. The categorical variable can be described using a proc freak statement. So we can take a look at the first tables for each of these scale variables, and we can see based on these tables and our inspection of the data set that assumption one is met, that the outcome variable is indeed a scale variable. We can also take a look at our categorical variable and how it's distributed. Next, we want to create scatter plots and or box plots. And the reason for this is because we want to check assumption two, which says that there must be a linear relationship between the predictor and outcome if the predictor is scale. And there needs to be a monotonic relationship between the predictor and outcome if the predictor is ordinal. So the way we can do this is by using drop down menus. We go to tasks and utilities, and then we go to graph, and then we go to scatter plot. So make sure you have the right data. We're using the data set called weights. The x-axis is the predictor variable. Our first predictor is age, and we do one scatter plot per scale predictor. Our y variable, our outcome, is birth weight. Next, click on appearance and select regression for the regression line. Click run. And we have generated a scatter plot with a slightly positive association between age and infant birth weight. So with increasing age comes increasing birth weight. Now we can go back to data and we can replace age with our next scale variable. So throw age in the trash, select LWT, OK, and run. And now you can see we generated another scatter plot, again showing a positive association, but this time between mother's weight at last menstrual cycle and birth weight of it. We can close out of scatter plot. Don't say. Now our third predictor variable is smoking. It is not an ordinal variable, it is a nominal variable. It just has two categories, so we don't need to create a box plot for it but I will go through the process and we can create a box plot just because it might be interesting and it might inform our alternative hypothesis. And so the way we do that is going back to the tasks and utilities menu and selecting box plot. This time the first variable, the analysis variable, is our outcome birth weight and the category is our categorical variable smoke. And now you can see we've generated a box plot that shows that birth weight on average is higher among infants with non-smoking mothers. We can close out of box plot. Now we are to step three, 
stating our null and alternative hypothesis and setting our significance level. Our null hypothesis is that none of the predictor variables will be significantly associated with the outcome. In multiple linear regression, we need to specify one alternative hypothesis per predictor variable. So since we have three predictors, three alternative hypotheses. And I'm going to make my hypotheses directional based on what I found out from the scatter plots and box plot. And I will set my alpha level at 0.05. Our next step is to actually conduct the linear regression analysis in SAS. And then if the model is significant, we'll check assumptions three through seven. In SAS, we use PROC REG, just like for simple linear regression. And just like for simple linear regression, our outcome variable is on the left side and our predictors are on the right side. Again, we specify DW for our Durbin Watson statistic, CLB for confidence intervals, and we add VIF for variance inflation factor. Now we'll highlight that and run. Now we need to know, is the overall model significant? We find that out by looking at this analysis of variance table. If this p-value is significant, the overall model is significant. Since it is significant, we can check assumptions three through seven. Assumption three is that there are no significant outliers. We check it by looking at this plot of Cook's D. Now we don't want to see any observations above Cook's D threshold. Uh, we do, but we are going to ignore them and move on as if we didn't see them. Assumption number four is independence of residuals. We check this by looking at our Durbin Watson statistic, which is in our table right here. It should be between one and three. Ours isn't, so the assumption is not met, but we will move on anyway for the purposes of this example. Assumption number five is homoscedasticity or constant variance of residuals. And we check that by looking at this plot right here. Now we don't wanna see any kind of pattern or funnel shape. We don't, so the assumption is met. Next, normal distribution of residuals. We check that by looking at this plot right here, and we don't want to see the data points clustered to one side of the line or other. This, it is okay. We have met our assumption number six. Assumption number seven is that there should be little or no correlation between the predictor variables. We check this by going back up to our parameter estimates table and looking at the column called variance inflation. All of these should be below 10. If they are, the assumption is met. Finally, if the assumptions are met, we're gonna say they are met, we can interpret the results. The first thing we wanna do is look at this R squared table and interpret the adjusted R squared. This is a proportion, so we can multiply it by 100 to turn it into a percent. And we can interpret it as the amount of variation in the outcome that can be explained by all the predictors together in the model. Next, we wanna look at our parameter estimates table. We want to interpret the association between the outcome and significant predictors based on their p-values. So here LWT and SMOKE are the only significant predictors. What we interpret specifically is the parameter estimate. The parameter estimate tells us about the direction and the strength of the association. Generically, we interpret the relationship between a scale predictor and the outcome as a one unit increase in that scale predictor is associated with some parameter estimate change, increase or decrease, in the outcome. So for LWT, we can say that every one pound increase in mother's weight at last menstrual cycle, that's the predictor, is associated with a 4.03 gram, that's the parameter estimate, increase, because it's positive, in infant birth weight on average. For nominal variables, our generic interpretation is compared to the reference category of the predictor variable, the other category is associated with this much change in the outcome. So for smoking, we can say that compared to mothers who didn't smoke during pregnancy, because that's the reference category, which is the lowest coded value, SAS will always set the reference category at the lowest coded value, unless you specify otherwise. So compared to mothers who didn't smoke during pregnancy, those who did, so that's the other category, delivered infants who weighed parameter estimate 
grams less because it's negative on average and include the p-value and confidence interval. And finally, you can use the significant parameter estimates in a linear regression equation to predict the outcome for any given value of the predictors. The best way to do this is to substitute the variable names and values from the parameters estimate table into the regression equation. And remember, only use the significant parameter estimates. So here, intercept is significant, so we include it. And then parameters estimate for mother's weight and for smoking. For example, if mother's weight at last menstrual cycle was 150 pounds and she smoked during pregnancy, predicted infant birth weight would be the intercept plus the parameter estimate for weight times the weight plus this parameter estimate because she was smoked during pregnancy. If the mother's weight at last menstrual cycle was 135 pounds and she did not smoke during pregnancy, we would leave that parameter estimate out of the model because remember, smoking has two categories. And so remember, SAS is just comparing those two categories. So if the mother is a smoker, this gets tacked on. If she is not, we leave it out of the equation. And that is it for the multiple linear regression tutorial. Hope it was helpful.